This is Rand Miller from Cyan. I'm a co-creator of Mist and Riven, and uh, more recently, Abduction, and working on Firmament. Hi there, this is Robin Miller. I co-created Mist and Riven many years ago. We kind of had a few things that we were balancing in our games, and the Mist in particular. It 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 felt like we had story, which is which was a very new thing for games. I think for Mist, we but we felt that that was, you know, a valid part of things, and that had to balance with our environment and our friction. So we had to put the puzzles in this friction in that, but we couldn't just put arbitrary friction in. There was a game that had come out. Um, right before Mist, called The Seventh Guest, and it had some story, and it had some friction, and it had some environments, but it certainly didn't feel like they were supporting each other. People love that game, you know, but our thing was, can we make these three elements support each other? Can the story tell about the environment? Does the friction feel like it's part of the story and the environment and vice versa? And can we weave those together in a valid way? And it felt like we, you know, Mist was our start doing that and then Riven was even much better. If you're just doing, you know, a more achievement oriented game where you've got quests to fulfill and, and you're done and you get a bag of gold or whatever, it's one thing. But in our games in particular, like starting with Mist, we we were trying to reveal a story in there and the story had a large part in keeping you immersed and involved. It wasn't that you were getting a bag of gold, you were you were trying to achieve something because you were part of the story. And so there was this enjoyment to making those things all support each other and uh, somehow made it feel more real to people as they played it, you know, that, that, that all the elements fit together well. We did mist, we started testing people and we realized we were missing something. We, of course, were building a world and so to us, a world is open and people should just be able to explore and they should pick up on things gradually. But there's a certain frustration level too when you're not giving more instruction. And so we ended up actually adjusting mist a bit by adding a couple pieces at the beginning to kind of do that reassurance stuff to make sure they got enough of the story where they where they could continue and they had an early task. You remember that, Robin? The story is the most challenging part of creating the game. I think that's what you're hitting on. You've got to cre create a story that's compelling enough to, in the very beginning of the game, it's got to have this incident that grabs the player early on and throughout the whole thing, wherever they're at, it's got to continually you know, rope them in and keep them moving. And that can get really boring really fast if that story isn't interesting. Or if you create a really fascinating, you know, intriguing story, it can be amazing. And so that's not easy to do in a nonlinear environment. I think that's the most challenging part. Yeah, we had this issue at the beginning where People started the game and they wandered around the island, but they weren't picking up on stuff. And we initially didn't have the four chamber. We put that in later, realizing that, oh, pe people need a little bit of a, of a boost. And we can start the story just a step earlier if we put a message from Atris to his wife in there 
that something's gone awry. And it felt like we needed that that story juice just a hair earlier. And as Robin has said many times, it missed felt like an experiment. You know, it was just us uh, learning as we went. And that was one of the things we changed. And I think for the better. I think so many games have taken that basic idea. I think it would have happened anyway and taken it a lot further. But now you see these massive stories where they really feel like, you know, much more like a novel. Mist felt like a short story, but for us at the time, that was very challenging. We didn't know if we could do that. We didn't know if that was accomplishable. There's something nice, I think, about how condensed and compact all of this story stuff is in Mist. It's not sprawling. And sometimes I do feel in like these world games, I feel a little lost. So there was something uh, that's comforting about Mist and also about Riven. You always can see like the other areas of the islands or you always know like the central place and it, it doesn't feel too far away. You can always, you always know how to get back to it. The size of it gave us the luxury of being able to really build every aspect of the world cohesively. There wasn't just filler. I mean, I, I say there wasn't just there. Of course there was, but we really looked at it as like, well, what, you know, can we build a story behind this? And we got better as we went. The early stuff in Mist was a little more raw. <laughs> and as we went down the path, it had more reason and logic behind it and more history behind it, I guess, in our minds as well. It was more of an experiment to see if the player could make some sort of decision between right or wrong. And it was part of the story. It was part of the story because we considered them the main character. And if they're the main character, they have to have a journey. It's very simple. It was a very simple journey. I don't know that we totally achieved that because it felt a little, by the end of it, it felt a little um, almost silly. However, I do think we achieved another thing, which is putting characters into a game and making them seem relatively believable. And that was enough. I think for what Mist was and for our first attempt, I think it did a lot. and. I think a lot of other games have gone a lot further and done a lot of other, you know, story stuff in, in within the context of a game. I I still am waiting for the game that, you know, that moves me to, to the extent that some really, you know, compelling film does, for example. people sometimes like it when they learn a little about themselves in something or there's a there's a deeper soul to it i don't you know i i don't know that we have gotten there with games that's really hard there's very few games that have done that we all know the movies and the books and even the songs that do that to us that touch us deeply and we learn something about ourselves um games i think we still strive for that um that's that kind of a soul. This is what games do to me, is that when I play a game, I am kind of a little obsessed by the environment. And when I leave the game, I just can't stop thinking about the world. It's like this: the world itself, the environment itself of that place, if it's a good game, becomes the character. And that's what I get to know. That's what I want to go back to and spend time with. It's not the people or the the characters that you meet in that world, those always seem silly to me. No matter what they do to try to make them seem real, the cutscenes, the cutscenes are, are ridiculous in games. I've never met a cutscene that seems anything but trite, but the worlds are profound. Until I'm finished the game, and, and then many times after I'm done, I just, are, I'm dying to get back to those games and be immersed. And I think that's the power of games.
how long is it going to be before we truly can interact with an AI character in a game? Because that, at that point, then things start to change. Like, wow, I'm having a discussion with somebody. And we can't even do that outside of games yet. So, so we have a ways to go before that happens where it's not just a, either a monologue, a cutscene, or, you know, a click a bubble to respond yes or no kind of a kind of a dialogue, which is not not real satisfying. So somehow the the worlds have to pick up the slack there. And luckily we're wired that way. We're wired to be amazed at worlds. Uh, you know, whether you go to a national park or Disneyland, we we can stand in awe of places and so there's plenty of room in there to to work with until we get the other end of things going. <laughs>